everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophia and today I'm going to be showing you how fashion has changed throughout the 20th century. So we're going to be putting together an outfit based off each decade. So for the more informative parts of the video, I will be looking a little bit off screen towards my left because I have my computer propped up with my script and I want to make sure that I get the details accurate and factually correct. So let's first start off with the 1910s. So 1910s fashion is denoted by an empire waist and a more top heavy bust. When World War I started, the average working class woman wore simple utilitarian clothing, like overalls and pants to work in factories for the war effort. Women of a higher socioeconomic class wore long skirts with tunics or jackets. Somewhat thick heels were commonly worn with stockings and they're kind of reminiscent of the Edwardian era. So these are two photos of a couple evening dresses that are authenticated pieces from the 1910s. They're obviously for more refined occasions. You most definitely would not be dressed like this walking around town. And as you can see, they are made of silk and have very intricate beading. And I thought it was very interesting to note the standards for modesty changes drastically as you can see from the dresses in the previous photos. And of course, I am replicating the turquoise beaded dress. So 1920s fashion was drastically different in that the fashions were much more simple and shapeless. Everyone is aware of flapper dresses at this point, so we're not going to go over that in this video. But pleated skirts that hit just below the knee were very popular. And during the first half of the Roaring Twenties, robe de style, and I might be pronouncing that wrong, but robe de style was very popular. And essentially, this was a dress that was nipped in at the waist and had a very large puffy skirt. So doing kind of a complete 180 in the latter half of the decade was something called Gargan style. And basically this was kind of just like a simple camise dress that hung from the shoulder to the knees that hid a woman's curves and figure. And Gargan style is often described as a boyish look by fashion historians, so I think that that rings pretty true by looking at photos. Cardigans, costume jewelry, and furs were especially in style, as were cloche hats. T-strap peels, as you can see by many of the photos, were the shoes to wear. So I don't have many longer skirts, hence this super bright pink one, but it turns out it's not too far from the real deal. Simple florals and deep pink were commonly found on skirts, and judging by the photos I saw, a simple light colored long sleeve was generally worn with these skirts, so here we go. Unfortunately, I do not have any T-strap heels in my shoe collection yet, so I opted for some plain flats, which appeared to have been worn back then. And of course, you have to have the hat. Imagine this look with a fur coat and a string of pearls and voila. All right, so moving on to the next decade. The 1930s fashion curtailed from the free-spirited look of the 20s. Halter style dresses for fancy occasions only, single button jackets, and corresponding gourd skirts became the norm. Okay, so gourd skirts are essentially a type of A-line skirt that is made from multiple different triangular panels sewn together while a normal A-line skirt has just a front and a back panel, for those of you that are wondering. So day dresses had modest tops, wide sleeves, bias cut, and flared at the hem. Curves were back in style then, fortunately. However, these dresses and skirts usually varied from below the knee all the way to the floor. And again, a thin belt was sometimes added to accentuate the waist. Shoes had thick heels and straps paired with stylish cutouts. Two-toned heels and Oxford-style shoes were quite popular, as well as T-strap heels for evening wear. And actually, what I thought was really cool was high-waisted sailor pants and skorts were actually a 1930s innovation. I definitely thought that they came later on in the game. Okay, so here I am wearing a longer blue polka dot dress that folds down at the neckline, which is something that stuck out to me in many of the photos. Patterns were very in at the time, especially florals and polka dots. Here I added a small belt to really accentuate my silhouette. And as you can notice, the dress is very modest and has those little cap sleeves. Here I'm in these lovely Oxford style heels that I found at a thrift store the other day actually. And they are so beautiful and appear to match the description of heels back in the 30s. And note the thicker heel and the shorter height. Now, obviously not all of the hats back in the 30s were pillbox style, but these were very popular during the time. All right, so moving on to the 40s, which unfortunately was a very dark time. So the 1940s fashion world was obviously impacted by World War II and was completely put on the back burner. Fabric shortages meant less elaborate dresses and just plain longer skirts. 
An emphasis on creating an hourglass shape with some masculine influence is the gist of this decade. We're talking shoulder pads, tops that concaved at the waist or right under the bust, and A-line skirts hitting right below the knee. Women that opted for pants wore high-waisted, wide leg pants that are coming back into style today, actually. Of course, with men fighting in Europe, women at the home front began working hands-on jobs that men had previously done and wore workwear overalls and jeans. That should be mentioned. The victory suit was also a popular choice and entailed a matching blazer-like jacket and skirt. So I think that victory suits were a totally amazing look and I'm so bummed that I don't have a purple blazer to really do this outfit justice. But then again, the 1940s outfits appear to be very simple and modest. So here we go. Here we have a white button up tucked into a little A-line skirt that ends a little below my knees, of course, and added are some minimal black flats again. I'll throw on a gray blazer just so that you can get a better idea of what a victory suit is supposed to look like. But then again, normally the blazer or jacket top matched the skirt. All right, so moving on to the 50s, and I love the fashion from this decade, let me tell you. So the 1950s exploded into wonderfully shaped clothes and brought back a more feminine flair. Cinched waists and full hips were definitely in style, and circle and pencil skirts did that best. Interestingly enough, the hemlines still remained similar to the 40s, if not just a tad bit longer. So you either went all out with swing dresses, complete with petticoats for some added volume, or more tailored suits, skirts, and even pants. Audrey Hepburn actually popularized the capri pants during the time and high-waisted jeans were definitely in back then. So colored blouses, twin set cardigans, which for those of you that don't know, they're just shorter cardigans that buttoned up the entire top, and this style called swing coats, which look just like they sound. 50s ladies got creative with the shoes and wore kitten heels, saddle shoes, and even stilettos to more formal occasions. Audrey Hepburn was one of the most elegant ladies to walk this earth, so it's only fitting that we dress like her for the 50s. Simply put, I have a white button-up tucked into capri pants. I added the belt to accentuate my figure, and remember that was one goal of 50s fashion, and I added a neck scarf to complete the look. So we're bringing back the black flats to keep this look timeless and womanly. And let's face it, stilettos don't usually go well with capris, and women definitely did not wear those day to day. I did some research into popular prints back in the day, hoping to pick out some pants in that style. And it turns out plaid was all the rage for men and women. So we'll see what I can do with the plaid. But how cool is that? It's so strange what trends stay with us for decades. All right, moving into the 1960s and man, were those some weird times. So the 1960s were something else and the complete shift in fashion indicates that clearly. Many skirts were now acceptable and generally paired with tights instead of stockings and go-go boots and pilgrim shoes were commonly paired with the short skirts. A-line shift dresses, which were shapeless in a similar way to the 20s ones, came back into style and pinafore dresses were all the rage as well. This decade saw a shift towards inexpensive and wildly accessible streetwear. High neck button-ups, turtlenecks, pullovers, and chunky knit sweaters were usually worn with slim tapered pants. Now, mind you, these were the years where Twiggy was the new it girl in the fashion industry and influenced the sudden shift greatly. But bell bottom pants, low heels, boots, and colorful pieces were all the rave as well. All right, so I modeled my look after all the women in that one photo where they're all sitting next to one another in a row. Again, the white button down tucked into a plaid mini skirt complete with my Oxford heels. Not the most creative outfit out there, but it seems like if you weren't leaning towards the hippie side of the late 60s, it was pretty tame. And something very interesting I thought to mention was at the beginning of the 60s, Jackie Kennedy was the style icon. And the style differences between her and Twiggy are just night and day. Look at these photos for comparison. It's like two completely different decades. So the last decade that we're going to be covering in this video are the 1970s. Now I'm assuming most of you guys know 80s and 90s fashion pretty well, so there's no need for me to drone on about it. So the 70s was actually very interesting in terms of fashion because all of these new styles were coming out. Mini skirts, still as popular and short as ever, were actually briefly overshadowed by these things called hot pants. And basically hot pants are just very, very short shorts. So not quite booty shorts, but almost there. So I was reading that the cool kids in town actually had the velvet and the satin hot pants. So those are quite interesting. <laughs> The caftan dress became popular as well, and it is the epitome of hippie boho. Think the free people dresses that no one ever buys and you can't tell if it's a beach cover up or a dress. So this is when platform shoes became huge. And basically if it was a shoe and if you could put a platform on it, they did. 
So platform heels and Oxfords were hugely popular. And of course, flared jeans, jumpsuits, and the 70s mod dress were fully embraced as well. Farrah Fawcett has to be one of the most beautiful people that I've ever seen in my whole life, so I definitely had to style my 70s look after her. Here we have some very high-waisted flare jeans and a floral button-up tucked in. I noticed that a lot of women showed their cleavage and collarbone a little bit when looking at photos from this decade, so I'm leaving a few buttons undone on purpose. And again, platform heels and especially loafers seem to have been popular, and unfortunately I don't have any of those in my collection, but I have seen at Fair Fawcett wear these tall heeled boots, so we're just gonna have to compensate with some knee-high leather boots. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you appreciate it and I hope that you learned something new because when researching this video, I was definitely very surprised and a lot of things that I thought were fashionable back in the day were not. So I hope that you learned something and yeah, thank you for watching and drop any video requests you have down below. Bye.